Hello everyone, my name is Kathleen. I hope you're all staying positive throughout this current situation and you and your loved ones are all safe and healthy. So, before I get started, I have one question to ask you. Who is Australia's worst serial killer? I'll give you a clue. They haven't been stopped yet. Okay, if you haven't guessed it already, I'll reveal the answer shortly. So, this week introduced us to the topic of creativity and its relevance within public relation practices. The guest lecturer, Sarah Mason, from the Houseman School of Public Relations, defines creativity as the use of imagination or original ideas to create something. And it is a crucial component for PR campaigns to stand out amongst the content-saturated media these days. One element from the lecture that I'll be discussing in depth is the wordplay approach from the Wiser Man concept. The Wiser Man acronym represents the words wordplay, images, soon, extremes, rest, modify, audience, and now. It is essentially a set of creative techniques that practitioners can use to foster inspiration when conceptualizing a campaign. However, as I said before, for this presentation, I would just be focusing on wordplay. As explained by Carol Griffiths in her book, The Art of Script Editing, wordplay is a literary technique and a form of wit in which words used become the main subject of the work primarily for the purpose of intended effect or amusement. PR practitioners can utilise wordplay in many forms, such as puns, rhymes and famous quotes. But today I will share with you the effectiveness of metaphors in relation to the Australia's Worst Serial Killer campaign. Metaphors are defined as a figure of speech, in which a term or phrase is applied to something to which it is not literally applicable in order to suggest a resemblance. They can be a powerful persuasive tool in public relations to evoke certain emotions and help bridge gaps in understanding of an issue. So, now I will reveal the answer to my first question. Who is Australia's worst serial killer? The answer is, it's heart disease. This is a prime example of the metaphor approach being used to attract the audience's attention. From the Heart Foundation, partnered with News Corp Australia. Has anyone seen or heard of this campaign before? For those who haven't, let me play a short clip to reveal what it's about. When watching it, think about what emotions does it evoke? How does it make you feel? I survived an attack from Australia's worst serial killer last year. I was walking home from my first day of a dream job, so I was feeling pretty great when it happened. The attack came out of nowhere. I know how lucky I was to survive, when so many haven't. This is a callous killer. Even the victims who live are too often left suffering, unable to manage basic tasks. For me, it's the psychological scars that are the hardest. It's something I'll endure forever. The serial killer campaign induces responses of fear, shock and speculation by depicting heart disease as a physical being that kills 51 people a day. 
they cleverly proclaim Australia's complacency with these statistics. And as Chris Taylor, the Chief Medical Officer of the Heart Foundation, expressed, if a serial killer was indiscriminately taking 51 lives across Australia each day, we'd spare no resources to bring them to justice and keep our community safe. The problem for the Heart Foundation was that over 400,000 Australians suffer a heart attack at some point in their lifetime. And every year, 31,000 people die from a direct or indirect cause of heart disease. So they needed a strategy to raise awareness about heart health. The solution was a four-week combined print, digital and broadcast media campaign which was launched and led by News Corp Australia. It featured high-impact spreads in News Corp's Sunday Metro newspapers and a takeover of the True Crime Australia site where, on the Monday, revealed the criminal as heart disease, the nation's worst ever serial killer. The delivery of print and digital was accompanied by an editorial advocacy and social media campaign sharing the hashtag, hashtag show some ticker, lobbying the federal and state leaders on seven initiatives, including Medicare funded heart health checks for all Australians at risk. Serial Killer also saw a homepage takeover on news.com.au and sponsorship of the True Crime Australia site, supported by TV and radio ads, and editorial and educational videos about heart disease on News Corp Australia and the Heart Foundation platforms, including social. Results show that in just seven days, there was more support from the federal government, federal opposition, and the Greens for more action to be taken on heart disease, including Medicare-funded health checks. The federal government promised to introduce a Medicare benefit schedule item number for heart health checks, which was estimated to prevent 9,100 deaths from heart attack and stroke over the following five years. As well, Almost 2,000 media stories, including print, online, radio and TV, that help spread the message to more than 20 million Australians. There was 140,000 unique completes of a new consumer heart age calculator, which was launched in conjunction with the Serial Killer campaign. And traffic on the Heart Foundation website increased by 270%. The campaign also saw News Corp win Best PR Campaign from B&T, a gold award at the Mumbrella Awards for Media Campaign of the Year, and two gold Effie Awards in the categories Short Term Effects and Media Led Idea or Media Partnership. In my opinion, the metaphor serial killer was such an effective use of wordplay that challenged the way society thought about this disease and keeping themselves healthy. I believe this was such a successful campaign as they relied on Australia's fascination with crime stories and serial killers to gain the attention from the audience. Take the clip I played earlier as an example. When you start listening to the pain in the story, you're instantly hooked. You want to know who is the attacker, and when it's revealed that the perpetrator is heart disease, you feel shocked and almost regretful that you weren't taking this problem seriously enough. So, to finish off, I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether the serial killer metaphor was effective And what sort of emotions did you feel?